Celebrity true or false? You can't handle the truth. Celebrity true or false with Kevin Bacon. True or false, while filming Apollo 13, scenes in the zero gravity plane could only occur in 25 second bursts, so the plane performed 612 dives. Is that true or false? That's true. Damn. Yeah, they're called parabolas. Uh, it's really the only way to duplicate zero gravity on Earth. And basically what you do is you fly out over the Gulf of Mexico and from you know Houston from where uh, they were leaving from NASA. And you go straight up, uh, and then you dive. And during the dive, the centrifugal force and the gravitational pull balance out for 25 seconds. So we did it just as a sort of research thing, and then um, ride along type thing. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, um, Ron Howard, who directed the film, was having a conversation with Steven Spielberg, who he was talking to about the movie and stuff. And Spielberg suggested that the that we build the sets up there and actually use the zero gravity. So Ron was able to convince NASA to let us do it. And uh, yeah, myself and Bill Paxton and, and Tom Hanks and I went up and did 600 and 12, you say, I guess. I which one was, which one of you three was able to handle it the best, do you think? Um, well, I, I can tell you that they gave us some pretty serious uh, uh, anti nausea drugs. And the comb it was a combination of drugs because the, the serious anti nausea drug was so, uh, uh, was such a downer that basically you just would want to sleep through the whole flight. So in order to combat that, you had to take some, some kind of speed. Wow. So we'd take them both at the same time, and then you'd kind of wait for it to see which one was going to kick in um, first. And uh, one day, both Tom and Bill, if I remember correctly, decided to go a little bit cowboy and not take them. And they were not doing well. Now, um, <laughs> they went I, cold turkey. They just yeah, went straight they up. Yeah, decided to just yeah. And I was I was having none of it. And um, <laughs> I was like, yeah, better living through chemistry. The I uh, so it I, you know I never puked. Um, I did have some moments of nausea, but it really is a is a question of whether or not you are prone uh, to you know car sickness or boat right. sickness or whatever it is. You know, some people are more prone to it. And I remember. Uh, the, there was a guy who was a big guy, big, you know, kind of football player type guy, grip. And um, he uh, he came up with us on the first run and never went up again. He just was completely incapacitated, you know, just puking after puke after puke after puke. They give you a thing. They call it an airman's corsage. You you have to they aside from our wardrobe, our costumes, everybody else had to be in in um, uh jumpsuits and 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 jack boots you know mm -hmm. to, to that was just the that was just the deal and so you take the vomit bags and you have these kind of like pockets up here and you stick them down in with the with the top open like yeah. kind of billing out like a corsage so that at any given moment you could just take it out you could just take it and reach it right out and uh and a lot of people were doing that so this is the real deal like you it went the through real the deal. real deal because spielberg told ron howard that exactly you should put him through the real deal yeah spielberg told ron and ron told us and, that was and then it. i told my wife and my wife said are you out of your mind you're gonna go up in that thing every day and then there was a problem with the plane and then so we the plane got grounded and then we had to go back to it so it ended up being a lot of work Incredible. Last one for you. Um, I guess this is going to be true since you talked about the ride-alongs here. Uh, you spent some time at Quantico preparing for your role as Captain Jack Ross in A Few Good Men. Yeah, I did. I did. What was that like? Well, great. Uh, listen, I, I, I think I've played, uh, strangely, three or four Marines. Um, I, and I think that's the only, might be the only branch of the military that I've ever done, which is mm -hmm. just Marines. Um I like to say that I could make it through about five minutes of boot camp. I mean, I would be like, get me out of here. <laughs> but I really, I really felt a, a need uh, to, in, in every instance, to try to be as believable as I would as at one character as I would be at Jackie Rohr, you know, for mm -hmm. instance. And Marines, you know, they do have something that's like very specific about them in the way that they move, in the way that they engage, in the way that they... Their, their attention to detail, for instance, on the uniform and um, uh, in, you know, protocol and, and this sort of, you know, 
brothership that you hear a lot about. And so to to get a sense of that and to basically be with Marines is like the best way to play one, I think. So I spent some time. So you spent some time there. Yeah. Okay. And um, when you see, I, I imagine at some point, if you are watching television and flipping around, a few good men will pop up. It mm -hmm. seems like it's play, it's got to be playing right now somewhere. When you see the final scene, what do you think of when you see the final scene? What I think of in that final scene is uh, how, you know, I'd, I've, worked, I've gotten an opportunity to work with a lot of great, great actors over mm -hmm. the years. And Jack Nicholson, definitely uh, one of the greats, one of my heroes before I ever, um, you know, was able to be in a scene with him. And it was so inspiring because we shot that scene with him doing that doing that speech and everybody was like holy this is going to be so good and this is you know he's just crushing it but what people don't understand sometimes about shooting a film is that it's multiple multiple takes of multiple angles and so that's a whole day of him doing that speech. And after we've shot all of the his coverage, meaning the stuff that's on him, mm -hmm. you then have to turn around and you have to shoot Tom reacting and Demi reacting and me reacting and the jury reacting and, you know, all these other things. And all day long, he just kept bringing it and bringing it and bringing it. And it was really, it was really just cool. And, and you know, it, it makes you go, you, you, the, the great actors know that, that the scene is about everybody in the scene, and um, to deliver that kind of stuff for somebody off camera was was just great to watch. Yeah, I imagine it had to have been just amazing because there would be times where I guess you know you're not on camera and they're doing either him or somebody else. You would just be sitting there like everybody else, just staring at it, right? Yeah. I mean that. Yep. Unbelievable. Is it true or false that you're a distant relative to Robert Redford, Mark Hamill, and Richard Nixon? I, I don't know. I, I've heard I've heard uh, <laughs> I've heard the Richard Nixon one. Uh, really? But, but yeah, uh, um, you know, I did that that finding your roots thing with uh, Henry Louis Gates, uh, and and you know, I mean, I think that the cousin the cousin thing is a li you know, distant relative. I mean, it's, it's, it's not that hard to be a distant relative to pretty much anybody. I mean, I. Well, you are Kevin Bacon. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, what we right. found out was that my wife and I are cousins. So, so there you go. Damn. Yeah. Okay, that's a that's a reveal. That's, that's a, a big reveal. reveal. Yeah. So the Redford and Ham, the the, uh, the I, Robert Redford and I'll Mark take Hamill. it. Listen, okay. I'll take it. You know, All right. whatever. Okay. There you go. You you have the force.